Welcome to the City Impact Church podcast. Join us weekly to listen to sermons from our Sunday services or our special events. For more information, visit cityimpactchurch.com or find us on our Facebook page. We pray you'll be inspired and challenged by this week's message. Uh, we're going to get right into it because we've got a lot to share, uh, lots of exciting things. I am pumped, I tell you, I am pumped. Um, and the, the reason being, maybe I'm just on like, on V. Uh, because, um, you know, I, I, I was up uh, after midnight last night emailing people stuff for this morning and then up early this morning, if you saw my post, praying and believing God for today and just laying out some of the very exciting things, very, get that, V-E-R-Y, exciting things. And so uh, I got to get into it this morning. But, you know, over the new year, just riding back up from Queenstown on uh, uh, Bev and I on our bike, that's not push bike, of course, uh, we're past that, it's a motorized uh, scooter, and um, <laughs> we're riding back up, and, and we'd been in the Queenstown Church for three straight weeks, um, and uh, we were on the road on a particular Sunday, um, and uh, I know you could say, well, we could have found a church, but enough to say that uh, we were riding, I had to get back up, and so he, I, I just felt like a fish out of water. Uh, and I really miss being in the house of God. And, um, and I was talking to my sister in Tauranga when we got there. And I said, I hate being away from church. I just love being at City Impact Church. And, and she said to me, my older sister, she said, is that control? And, and, and I said, no. I said, to be honest, it is really just wanting to be part of something that's bigger than myself. It's, it's wanting to be part of something that's making a difference. I want to do something with my life. And, and so I just, I, I really felt I was kind of like missing out. And it is true that people so often can misjudge your motives, right? And uh, not that she was necessarily doing that. She actually was the reason I came to the Lord in the first place. But when Christ is burnt into your heart, I say that because she could be watching on live stream. But when Christ is burnt into your heart, eternity, right? And you know what's of eternal value instead of what's of temporal value. You want to do something with your life. You want to do something with your life. Amen. You understand the priority of life. And I'm sure we all want to do something with our lives. We just don't want to waste the days and, and let time go by. Amen. And I know I'm talking to people who want to make a difference in life. And of course, I'm talking about the cause of Christ. I'm talking about the kingdom. I'm talking about the church. And you know, and I've often said, there's nothing better or worthwhile to give your life to than the cause of Christ. You know, last week, I, if you please, if you missed it, my podcast or, or watch it on podcast, but I was talking about the state of the world. I know, I know, beautiful down there and Queenstown and Chicago, we can bury our heads in the sand and not understand what's happening in the world today. The world is being shaken. No two ways about it. I talked about some issues to let people know who don't watch the news because, you know, often it can be too negative for people. But I want you to understand that the day of the Lord is drawing nigh. No, no two ways about it. Amen. And I talked about the day of the Lord, and I love you to watch that. Very important to lead into what I'm talking about this morning. But in 2019, just like last year, I want to be fruitful. I want to have the abundance of fruit. And I want to have the quality of fruit. Amen. The Bible says that heaven rejoices over one soul that repents. Praise God. Come on, somebody say praise God. I want you to help me out. Now, everybody here has only got so much time, energy, and money. Right? Let's go to Luke chapter 12, verse 15. And Jesus said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? And he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater. I've had to think about this scripture as building a new house right now. And there I will store all my crops and goods and plastic containers. I thought I'd had to throw that in there. And I, this, it wasn't the building. It was the next statement that where the guy lost the plot. I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease. Oops. 
eat, drink, and be merry. Eat, drink, you know. I was down at the beach yesterday, and I was going around talking to people, and I said, how far do our people extend down there? They go for, like, miles. And so I was walking down. I finally got to this group, and uh, they were uh, Chinese folk, lovely folk. They could hardly speak English, and I wasn't sure whether they were part of the church, and and so I was talking away. And and then they said, would you like a beer, you know? Uh, And uh, and I said, do you go to City Impact Church? (laughs) I thought I'd better ask, you know. And... um, because I thought if they don't, I could help. No, I just, I just. So, so in any case, so, so, so the thing was, was that, um, you know, I got talking with them. And one had been uh, a while back, but they weren't part of the family picnic. But it was cool. And so they took my phone. I took their phone. I was going to put it up this morning, but I have time, I don't have time. Uh, a little outreach there at the picnic yesterday. It was awesome. So uh, just drink. Eat, drink, and be merry. So I haven't backslidden yet. <laughs> But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you, then those things be which you have, uh, have provided. And so we see it wasn't the building, it was the eat, drink, ease, and all that kind of stuff. And verse 21, So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Is not rich towards God. Jesus went on to say, Seek first the kingdom of God, then all the other things will get added to you. Amen. And so he's warning people to be rich towards God. You know, I don't know whether you know, if you don't watch the news, you may not know, but uh, just over the Christmas period, a gentleman by the name of Jeff Bezos. Did I get the name right? Bezos. The richest man in the world. He owns Amazon, right? And uh, the founder of Amazon, and he's worth about $200 billion. Depends on the day, of course. But enough to say that he announced he was getting divorced. That means his wife, because he lives in a state that will be 50-50, will become the richest woman in the world. I'm just thinking of all the ladies who think, I married the wrong guy. But in any case, now, I'm not talking about the divorce because I know life can be complex at times. But I don't know whether you remember the song, the Beatles song. Money can't buy me love. No, can't buy me love. No, dun, dun, dun. I mean, who, 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 who remembers the Beatles? I mean, it's a long time ago for some of you, right? But the thing is, is that it's a sobering lesson. Money surely can't buy you love. $200 billion. I'm sure he loved his wife when they walked down the aisle, right? And so we need to remember that money can't buy you love, but it can't buy you time either. It can't buy you energy. It can't buy you peace or contentment. It can't even buy you a stable marriage. It can't buy you a sense of purpose or morality or freedom from inner demons. I could go on. I know money can buy you things. Hello? I'm going to talk to my wife, Isaac, about your deck chairs because she wants some outdoor furniture. I think your crate chairs, and you had to be there to see them yesterday at the barbecue, were awesome, man. They were blokes' chairs. But in any case, beauty doesn't buy you happiness either. Think about it. I know a sexy wife or a sexy husband may help from time to time. But the facts are, it's often the sexy and the rich and the famous that struggle with the most self-image. And often have great battles with drugs, alcohol, and relationships. Hello. Here's some wisdom from the book of Proverbs 17.1. Better is a dry morsel with quietness than a house full of sacrifices with strife. So the sad truth is, is often as true, the more we have, the less content we can become. Have you ever seen kids in a third world country just kicking around a soccer ball as happy as Larry and as half flat? Even though, you know, I mean, they use other things even for, for soccer balls. But, you know, the thing, you give some kids a cardboard box and they're happy rather than the latest iPhone. Now, the bigger issue, true, is money I know can buy you things, but it can't buy you love. And more importantly, it cannot buy you eternity. Jesus spoke about the rich man and Lazarus. Remember Steve Jobs? Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, another very wealthy man in his autobiography. He said, the closer I get to death, the more I think about God. Isn't it sad to be that wealthy and die so young? But likewise, and please hear me this morning, remember poverty 
can't buy you those things either. Poverty is both demeaning and draining. Nobody says, I can't wait to be broke, then I'll be happy. (laughs) People often say, I can't wait to be rich, then I'll be happy. I came across a great scripture reading the scriptures before I came to church this morning, Proverbs chapter 10. I hope you read it, Proverbs chapter 10. There's a photo. I took a photo of it. I bring it up on the screen. Hopefully it comes up. I'll get my iPad out. But two scriptures in that, in that photograph. Do we have it, Nellie? Where's my phone? I need my phone. We didn't get it in chapel either. We, we... I'm going to read it to you because it's important. Stay with me out the west, all right? Proverbs chapter 10, the rich man's wealth is a strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. So according to that, it's better to have money than not money, right? uh, 22, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow to it. But my friend, poverty nor money is the key to happiness. Neither of them are the key to happiness, to peace, to contentment, to marital stability, if far from it. You might say to me, Peter, why are you talking about money and poverty on Vision Sunday? Surely you'd wait to sacrificial offering. It's coming up. Well, the question, or could I say the answer, or could I say the vision, is not whether we're rich and poor in the natural, but are we rich towards God? Are we rich with our time, our energy, and our money? Are we rich towards God? Now, rich, I want you to think about this. What does rich mean? Rich means someone possessing wealth. Someone possessing wealth. You know, I see a a, a rich Christian, not someone who's got a lot of money necessarily, but someone who's possessing the wealth of the Holy Spirit. The wealth of the Holy Spirit, the gifts and fruit of the Spirit, that's available to us all. All. Wealth in the book of Proverbs speaks about a wealthy man having wisdom, having understanding, having knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, right? That's available to us all. We can be wealthy, wealthy in the Holy Spirit. We can be rich towards God. Jesus, remember, said this, don't lay up treasure for yourself, but be rich towards God. Timothy 1, 17 says, be rich in good works. We've got a community day coming up. Be rich in good works. James 2.5, be rich in faith. Be rich in faith. Rich, yes, possessing wealth, spiritual wealth. But also when I think of the word rich, if that's for me, just take a message. I had three phone calls in chapel. I, and, uh, you know, I just, uh, well, one of them was important. I'll tell you why in a moment. But be rich. If it's Jacinda, just tell I'll call her back. <laughs> and if it's Donald, I'll speak to him now. Rich. (laughs) What else is rich? Well, you know, chocolate, coffee, a rich aroma. What is the culture? What is our DNA? City Impact Church, are we friendly? Are we loving? Are we graceful? Are we a church of excellence? What is it? Are we rich? What are we giving off? What aroma are we giving off? You know, some people, let's be honest, some people just stink. Now, I'm not talking about their aftershave. I'm just talking about the aroma, the stingy, the gossiping, the envy. Did you know that pastor's building a big house? I mean, people get all envious and jealous and, you know, so forth, so forth. In actual fact, in a moment, we'll be handing out a little vial of coffee beans. You'll be able to smell, I trust, uh, if you like coffee, a nice aroma. But it's better than handing you something else a vial full of. Just that I tell you. You know, God is rich in his love towards us. Romans 10, 12. The Lord is rich. Listen now. The Lord is rich to all who call upon him. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. I need people who are going to be rich to fulfill the vision that I'm going to give you in a moment. I'm very excited about it. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. Though he was rich. Yet he became poor that we through his poverty may become rich. One more, Matthew 6, 19. Do not lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven where moss and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasure in heavens. Did I read that right? 
We must no rust destroy. Where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. No man can serve two masters. For he hate one and love the other, or else he'll be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. He went on to say, and it's a verse that's spoken to my heart, because my dad fell for this trap right here. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So by giving of your time, energy, and money in the kingdom of God, you're being rich towards God. You're investing in eternity. You're investing in the souls of men and women. Is there any better investment? I ask you that. And I'm going to ask you to join me this year and beyond. With that which I lay out to you, I'm going to ask you to help me to be rich towards God. Because the point of it is very simple. Our focus needs to be on our inner person rather than our outward appearance. Do you know 80% of people like this? 20% of people don't? But those 20% are very vocal. I'm just telling you. But let's give more attention to the quality of our relationships and to the quantity of our possessions. Let's emphasize our spiritual house in order, make sure it's in order (laughs) before we pursue our earthly dreams. And so whether we're rich or poor, whether we're famous or unknown, whether we're beautiful or plain, we can be blessed and content. Our marriages can be stronger. Our lives can be better. We can go to sleep at night. Listen, we can go to sleep at night with peace and we can get up in the morning with purpose. I said we can go to sleep at night with peace and get up in the morning with purpose. Is there anything more important than that? Can I ask you that? And so it comes up on the screen in 2019. The righteous shall live by his faith. Habakkuk 2.2. And I know, girls, I've missed your point, but that's okay. The Lord answered me. Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets. Everybody say tablets. Tablets. So he who runs... He, who, he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits for a point of time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. <laughs> Even if it seems slow, wait for it. It shall surely come. It will not delay. That which I talked to you this morning is going to take time to roll out. I said to the team, it may take five years to get it all together. But it will happen. I want it done yesterday. I've talked to them about that. But enough to say it's going to depend on you and it's going to depend on me. You know, City Impact Church, we've got a lot figured out and so we should. We've got great things happening <laughs> and so we should. You know, let me, let, me just, let me just tell you, for those who missed it, but we've got a young man here, Jonathan. He is, he is in the top 5% in the world in the medical intake at university. Top 5% in the world. We got Jordan representing New Zealand and LA in a real estate thing. We got, we got the world robotics champions, David Ashton. We got Olympic and Commonwealth uh, 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 people here. We got Sarah in cycling, Amy in kayak, uh, Ruby just was ordained uh, in the bar. We got Maddie, Dean Scholar. We got Ella and Neve in, in Arts Academy, dance. I mean, hello. We got some great people. And then we got a lot of average people just like me. You know, I've never been to the Olympics. I never represent the world on anything. I'm just an average person, but God can use average people to do great things. <laughs> do you know, just last week, just last week, we had 101 salvations. Just last week. Just last week, 101. And God kind of puts that one on the end to let you know that one person makes a difference. In Mount Wellington, in our first year, I still remember, this is how God does it. This is how he's done it in our lives. 1,111 people got saved in Mount Wellington in the first year. One person makes a difference. Now, some of you will remember the big five that I presented, uh, you know, a decade ago. And uh, it was so awesome. Our school. Man, I tell you, it is happening. Do you know that one of our students this year I'm talking Cambridge. One of our students, and it comes up on the screen, Tristan Holland, was top in New Zealand at Cambridge in a particular subject. Top in New Zealand. Man, I'm, I'm, that's awesome. You know, I was listening to the two boys in Mount Wellington at their mum's service. 
They both got up and spoke so highly of the school that they'd been to. They're back in only Hunger High School now. And they were joking how their mates back there don't understand long division, but they do because of City Impact Church School. And they're saying how it was great to come to a school where teachers care about them. And they went on about it. I was sitting there with tears in my eyes saying, what a difference we can make in people's lives. And then, of course, we talked about television, and we did that. Impact for Life is shown in 152 nations around the world today. I think about the sanctuary that we built, and I know it's old hat, but it still costs <laughs> a lot of money to maintain it. But what an achievement to build this with volunteers, amen? And we did it. We pulled off all of these five, the big five. We did it. I think about our, our mission campuses. We had five back then. We have 65 today around the world in India, Philippines, Mexico, Tonga, uh, other places. We've also got other campuses in New Zealand like Mount Wellington in the West and so forth. Do you know Mount Wellington? I got this from Sade, Pastor Tim. Got it. 8,658 people with names have been through those doors. That's a lot of people. There are 2,232 active people there. This is one of the most successful church plants in the history of New Zealand. No two ways about it. No two ways about it. We've seen over, and this number is light because I know what we did in the first three years with Marie used to um, give me the figures, but the sh figure that Shada had were names, 3,883 souls saved. <laughs> One person makes a difference. I mean, you know, West. Let me talk about the West. In seven months, seven months, we have sitting over there right now 370 people. 116 salvations. So many great things. We take things for granted. I drive in the gate. There's a $3 million childcare getting built right beside us here. City Impact Church childcare. And we just kind of, well, you know, it's just happening on the side. Lots of good things happening. I can talk. Last Sunday night, <laughs> I met a pastor that brought their family all the way from Argentina to come to youth camp. Why would you do that? Well, listen up. Awesome, awesome guests, guests from a little, from a little further, further away, away than we usually have uh, at, uh, at, at Youth Camp, camp. Uh, all the way uh, from Argentina, Argentina, in fact. Wow. Uh, and so I just want to take a second and invite Pastor Mariano up on the stage. Uh, would you just come up here, please? <laughs> so Pastor Mariano, you had, uh, hello, how are you? Good to see you. Uh, Pastor Mario had, had been to New Zealand and been to City Impact Church before about seven years ago. Uh, and then, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly, you can tell the story properly. Uh, but basically, arranged a trip to New Zealand so he could bring his kids to youth camp. So you can tell us about why you're crazy enough to do that. <laughs> so we just came here seven, seven years ago for a trip, a small trip. Uh, and we visit City Impact Church and, and God really impacts us and we have an awesome awesome time so since that time we've been in touch through uh, internet you know looking around and a few weeks ago i was talking with one friend of us pastor cash luna i know you guys know he's a friend of us so i say hey i probably want to visit new zealand again so i say say hi to city impact church for me so um so hi to you you know <laughs> So um, I told my wife, I said, hey, we should, we should take our kids to the youth camp. Oh, wow. And she said, where at? Oh. I said, well, I was looking some post from uh, Pastor Joe uh, about the, they're having the youth camp. And uh, she, she said, are you sure? I said, well, why not? <laughs> so I talked with the church, and I have a, a one company, so I do all my, my, my stuff just to, to, to spend this week in here. Wow. So um, we have a great time. We are really uh, love you guys. Um, you, you don't know how, how strong your church is all around the world. Uh, just, just to let you know that probably you, you, you travel a lot of time from, I don't know, Takapuna or... <laughs> 
and probably it's hard, traffic is hard. <laughs> but uh, let me know that there's people around the world that they just wow. receive a lot of what you guys are doing here. We are people coming from Argentina, traveling 14 hours in a straight direct fly, Whoa. just to spend a few days with you receiving what you are receiving. And this is just only a free sample that God want to give you like a church. Yeah. There's a lot of more of people around the world they want to be in traveling to your youth camp, to your conference. Be ready. Be ready. Start to learn in Spanish. That was just last Sunday night. And um, in fact, while I was sitting in the service right now, right now, I got a, I got a text from him. He's got a church, uh, uh, 6,000 people over there. And um, he, he just... He just text me, and I'm just looking for his text, um, and uh, uh, where is it? Maybe it's an email, me email. Yeah, email. Hello, pastor, we're back in our house. Thanks for welcoming us. My children had an incredible time at camp, and we too hope to see you soon. A big Argentina hug. <laughs> Marian. So enough to say that that was just last week. Do you know today, today, we've got a pastor here that came all the way from Fiji to be with us and our Vision Sunday, because they have friends at Mount Wellington, they heard about City Impact Church, want to learn, want to grow, want to glean from us. And so Pastor Nathan and your dear wife, Kuna, would you stand, please? And your team, they bought from Fiji just to be with us today on Vision Sunday, which is very, very awesome. And so I'm excited about that. And, you know, this is just, this is just right recently. We, we do have this, uh, you know, quite regularly. But, you know, let me give you a couple of quotes. Let me give you a quote. You ready out the West? Buckle in now. Here it comes. In the Congo. I saw that poster, Pastor Darrell. Ah. Any case, a quote from Sam Chan. The majority of growth comes from new initiatives. Anybody here had a baby recently? <laughs> Babies tend to bring, and we've got somebody here that's going to have a baby, but enough to say we've got a few. Um, Baby grows the fastest. New responsibility. My mum used to say, a new broom sweeps clean. Another quote by Dr. Bernard, creativity is the lifeblood of any organization. And so we all know, and I'm sure we all know, that 2000 and beyond is the age of the digital visual world. The digital visual world. I mean, virtual reality is upon us, right? And I'm thinking always, how can we reach more people for Jesus? Every time I go to a small town, I think, you know, shall I do crusades throughout, you know, every small town New Zealand? What can I do to share the gospel? I'm not the greatest preacher. I just want to do something for God. And so we know media is the language of the day. And our television program does that well. But there's more. Everybody say more. more. And so City Impact Church, by the grace of God, has been graced with media excellence. It has. Now, it doesn't necessarily come out of these hands and so forth, but our media, our clips, our promo clips are shown around the world in churches. Pastors of big churches love what we do in our media area. It's second to none. No two ways about that. Large churches copy what we do. Pastor, I could mention pastors' names, but I won't. This is going around the world, but enough to say I know. They've spoken to me about it. And so, I mean, last year, last year, we had the second highest grossing New Zealand made movie. Broken. I know we're over it. I know it's in the past. But hey, <laughs> we did it. The digital mission field. I know that this vision that I'm going to give you this morning would be better to wait to 2020. 2020, get it? But I can't wait till next year. I'm hot to go now. And I know some of you don't want to wait either. So I'm going to present to you this morning the Visual 5. Visual 5. Everybody say Visual 5. The digital mission field of today. Number one, the digital mission field of today. Everybody say Theatre Church. Theater. Come on, say Theatre Church. Out the West, Theatre Church. You know... How good it is. I, we, I was just talking to Tony last night. She's going out the west. She loves it out there. I said, are you sick of me already? I said to her. But 
as you know, the West Campus Plan has become very successful. The Westgate Movie Church, the Theater Church. Let me give you quickly seven advantages to planning churches and theaters. One is culturally relevant. It's a pleasant experience to go to the picture theater rather than a school hall. Number two, flexible locations. They're in the hub of the community. We're taking the church to the community. Number three, comfortable seats. Number four, big screens already to simulcast to. Number five, <laughs> easy to find. Number six, parking's available. Yes. Number seven, they're economical. It costs over $11 million to plant Mount Wellington, 100000 to plant the West. Hello? Now, I have to say, Mount Wellington, great return. It's worth $22 million today. And if we found another building like that, we'd buy it yesterday. But we will grow into those. But you work it out per head and for the business people, <laughs> I won't go there. It sounds too carnal. Number eight, great opportunity for team. Theater church, church of the movies. So it, after Easter, everything's on hold to Easter because <laughs> my life is crazy between now and Easter. I got conferences in the States and Hawaii, and I did not choose the location, but enough to say someone's got to go. And I'm preaching there at Inspired Church, which is a great church, and, and so forth, so forth. And then I'm in Texas, another conference, and I'm moving house, and oh, just crazy crap into storage, and, you know, my new home's not ready yet, and so forth, so forth. So after Easter, we are starting in the East. I've talked about it for years. We're just going to do it, just like we did in the West. We'll just do it. Hallelujah. And then, and it depends on you, 100,000. How many churches would you like to plant? Help me plant. 100,000 a pop, we can plant churches throughout New Zealand. Throughout New Zealand, we can go to every small town. I was asking people as they come up, would you go to the church next door, the movie theater, if I was preaching there on Sunday? Yes, they said, I'll be preaching, I said. Simulcasting, people who are born into it will love it. It's a way of the future. And so I'll be sending people out ahead. They'll be securing the theater. They'll be advertising for musicians and advertising for children's workers. Never been done before. I'm excited about it. We can do it. We can plant churches throughout the... We can have campuses. They'll receive the simulcast every week. If we can't find the musicians, then we'll just do our live worship DVDs. We hope to do another one at Global Impact this year. We'll have enough music for that. And so the emphasis will be on a Sunday morning service and impact hubs. Sunday morning services and impact hubs. You know, they went from temple and to house to house. And so theater church will be coming. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you right now, they'll come together for the word. They'll come together for worship and come together for relationships. We're going to make them according to the pattern. You know what the pattern is? Believe, become, hallelujah, belong, sorry, become and build. You're going to get four magnets. I want you to put, not put them on the fridge and to remind you of all these campuses that we're going to plant according to the pattern throughout New Zealand. It's up to you, though. And so the thing is, is that I'm excited about it. You might say, where are you going to go, Peter? What towns are we going to go? We've got people all over New Zealand, by the way, who have moved out who have probably become part of it. But wherever the door opens, I found some picture theaters played movies on Sunday morning, so they're not open. And the scripture that God gave me was James 4. Come now, you say, today and tomorrow we'll go to such and such city, spend a year there, buy and sell, make a profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is life is even a vapor that appears for a little time, then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live, do this and that. You may remember the message I did last year on doors and voices. Come up here and I will show you. In other words, God opens doors, God closes doors. And so we will go where the door opens. We'll go where we can get the theater. And uh, I, I'm very excited. Now listen, now listen. Not just for change's sake, but because movie theaters out the West, sometimes they have trouble to pack down before we're finished church because they've got to be out by 12. And so our chapel service, 8.30 to 9.30, our family service, this service, is going to go from 10, not 10.30, 10. I know you're used to 10.30, you'll adjust. And instead of finishing at 11.30 to quarter to 12, it's going to finish 11.15 to 11.30. Bring it forward, amen. And so I'm excited about that. V, visual, V, visual five, get it, Roman numerals? I know you're not that thick. And so the thing is, is number one is... Uh, Number one, I got five. We're going to move quickly. Theater Church. Number two, we're going to live stream 
a Tuesday night Bible college. All the stuff that I used to be able to teach, and I had people like John Bevere say to me, Peter, you need to get the tabernacle stuff out around the world, the people that need to hear about that, about the feasts and so forth, so forth. We're going to live stream Bible college. I won't be the only lecturer there, but again, this will happen after Easter. It's going to be awesome. And so people will come, but it'll also be live streamed. People can tune away. Do you know there are nations where people are so hungry for the word? Because they don't have what you and I have, amen? We're going to have legacy material there, my story and other things going to happen. Number three, and here we go. Number three, so excited about it. We talked about it in times gone by. We talked about a children's television program. But as you know, TV is getting old school and YouTube channels are what all the kids are watching right now. And so we're going to have kids watching kids. We're going to start a children's YouTube channel. We talked about it too long. And Josh and Sammy came to me. We were talking about it. Josh and Sammy are so excited about it. In two weeks' time, when I'm in America, Josh is going to preach a message around these things. He'll give his ideas. What he they've got? I I tell you, if I if I if I talk to you about it right now, you'd be so inspired. They've got it down pat. They know what they're going to do. Obviously, obviously, it's resources that are going to be able to pull this off. But our children's YouTube channel. Not only that. We're going to have a youth YouTube channel. This is very popular, very popular today. So they're talking about, you know, two young, trendy-looking guys. They said, Pastor Peter, would you be one? I said, "Uh, let me think about it. So in any case, no, young people, you know. I got to see Alan Roth, but he's getting too old. But in any case, young people. So, you know, trendy guys going into towns, and you know, they could be witnessing to somebody or praying, seeing a miracle, and then going surfing, eating oysters and bluff. I mean, you know, all these shows that are very popular that you might watch, and people have been coming and saying, hey, you know. And so the thing is, these shows get 60 million views. Somebody's telling me about a show exactly, you know, similar to this. And so it'll be a Christian content. It'll be youth for youth and so forth, so forth. And I'm very excited about it. And so again, Josh will be sharing the ideas and the brilliancy of it. And, uh, you know, he, he is uh, obviously a gift from heaven. And, and uh, so the visual five. And so not only we've got a youth, youth YouTube, but we're doing a mission one. And so what, what are you talking about? Well, do you know anything about television programs today? Do you know what's popular? Food, culture, and travel. He's going to combine them all. You could imagine, you know, them going over there with India with Pastor Gladys, you know, cooking up, a, you know, the Indian curry and, you know, them trying it. And, you know, but it shows the social arm of the church, the orphanages that we have. We've got three orphanages now and shows the orphanage going to Tanzania and, and showing what we do. Their kids and eating of what they eat and, and so forth, so forth. I mean, I mean, way they've got way better ideas of what I'm just trying to get out to you now. And and then when we finish with all our mission program, which will take a while, we're going to do Friends of City Impact Church. Go to Sweden with Pastor Joachim and see what's happening with the immigrants here and the Muslims that are getting saved and having dreams and coming to Jesus. And then, you know, going to uh, Cash Luna down in Guatemala and Suli up in Fiji. And I've got many. I've got hundreds of friends around the world. Matt's in Russia. I just invited to his birthday party. Bib wants to go to Russia for the birthday party. Oh, oh, oh. any case. um, so, so, friends of City Impact Church, that's going to be awesome. Uh, the visual five, the visual five. Do you know what else we're going to be doing? They've got it. They've got it all down. That's the five. But on the side, as a standalone, we're going to be doing another movie. That, uh, hey, it's not like the movie Broken, you know, which is hardcore. This is like a, this is going to be a romantic, nerdy comedy. They don't want me. Um, you know, and around the Lord of the Rings, they've got it all laid out. They've got the thoughts. It's going to be awesome. And do you know the, the prophecy of Michael Maiden where he prophesied here? Remember, he came at Benny Perez at, at Global, and he said, this church will produce seven movies. It'll be known around the world as a, as a storytelling church. Guess what? While I was in the previous service in chapel, a text came through. Would I like to have Michael Maiden speak tonight? I thought, well, the prophecy is alive and well. we got an anointing service here tonight. We're going to be anointing everybody with oil for 2019. I'll tell you why in a moment. But we will also have Michael Maiden here speaking prophetically for 20 minutes since he gave us that prophecy. And so, 2019, the other thing I want to do is create a space, as I always have, and a platform for the next generation. And so Sunday nights, which I love. I mean, I've been doing them for 30, 
eight years. I love preaching on Sunday nights. And so our Sunday night service, I am actually letting go of and turning over. It means I may not even be there. I might have to go to Mount Wellington. This is on the North Shore. I know I'm talking just on the North Shore uh, with Michael Main. He'll be simulcast live tonight, by the way. You pastors, campus pastors. Um, uh, but in any case, on the North Shore here. And so I approached Pastor Joe. I said, Joe, I want to hand you the Sunday night platform. You run the service. You, you get your team together. Other young people get ideas. This is your, it's not a you service. You run it. Here's a resource. Here's a platform. You do what you like. You want to bring it back in here? You want to swing from the chandeliers? As long as it's doctrinally right and winning souls. I'm letting go. I said to Joe, I'll do what I tell me. If you want me on the front row, I'll, I'll sit up the back wherever you want. It's your service. Go for it. I want to create a space. Remember last week, I talked about the state of the world. And again, I want you to watch that podcast but because it says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together and all the more as you see that are approaching. So in 2019, can I ask you, please, be rich towards God in this visual five. These are big things. It's going to be multi-million dollars, I know. But we can do it, church. How many theater churches can we plant? It's going to depend upon you. I was talking with the likes of Dave Story out there, and I was talking with the likes of Ian Bensley, and I said, okay, guys, how many churches have you got within you? <laughs> it's going quiet in this holy place. But we've got a sacrificial offering coming up in a few weeks' time. I want you to pray about it. I'm asking you to do your bit. How fast can we get these YouTube channels up and running? I'm keen, but we need you. We're going to create creative hubs, creative hubs that will help people with their time, energy, and money to develop their giftings. See, every person doing their bit causes their growth. And so in 2019 and beyond, we're going to roll this out. Though the vision tarry, wait for it. Just like the big five, we're going to pull it off. Hallelujah. We'll pull it off. And it will outlive me. Hallelujah. I'm excited about it. The visual five. It's a new world, the digital world. And I know the young people will be clamoring to get involved with that. And so it's exciting. The other thing we're going to be doing as we bring this service to a close is we're ordaining local elders, local elders. The reason for that is I have a national eldership and uh, we know who they are. Pastors Paul and Sue, Sid and Claire, Graham and Kim, Charlie and Janet. These have been elders a long time. I thought about moving them on because they're getting old. But for Bev and I, it's great to have them. They're a great support to us. They love us. They know us, obviously, inside and out. And uh, so that is a great comfort and a blessing to us and so forth. But I also want to bring on other elders and so other eldership. So we're going to ordain local elders here on the North Shore and for Mount Wellington and in Queenstown. Not in all the campuses yet. They need to be a, obviously a certain size and so forth, so forth. And, uh, but I just appreciate the campus passes so we got. And so I'll be inviting to them to the platform in a moment. And uh, I'll be announcing who they are. I, I have done, done that already. And uh, I'll be signing off from Invercargill and, and uh, Bill Clutha and out the west because they have to, um, you know, pack up. Uh, but Mount Wellington will want to stay because I'm also ordaining uh, some local youth pastors. Uh, one youth pastor here on the North Shore and uh, two youth pastors out at Mount Wellington. And this is uh, like hot off the press. I'm excited about it and so forth, so forth. So as I said, tonight, tonight, Michael Maiden will be streamed live and we'll be praying for people, uh, anointing people with oil. Uh, why are we anointing people with oil tonight? Well, we're empowering you for 2019. Empowering people. I believe when we anoint people with oil, some people will be healed. Some people will receive a new gift of the Holy Spirit. Empowerment. But remember this, the fragrance of the Holy Spirit. The fragrance of oil, it's a rich aroma, and that's what I want in 2019. And so on the way out, you will get your, your, your coffee vial, you will get your magnets. I want you to take care of those, and I want you to uh, remember this day, the visual five is upon us. I said to the team, I want to do it all yesterday, but it'll take time to roll out. And so they're going to be working. We've been talking about, you know, staffing and different things to make this happen, so we'll work it out.